Wednesday of Holy Week. A theme of welcome. Or alternatively, we might say, the cushion and the cross. Some of you may have read the Passion Narrative in its entirety this last Sunday, Palm Sunday. If you did that, then you will have read these words from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. In my Holy Week reflection yesterday, I mentioned that I'm a volunteer for the National Trust, something that I have done in my spare time for the last five years. There are certain things expected of National Trust volunteers, not least to ensure that we always give a warm welcome to visitors and if we have the opportunity, we thank them and say goodbye when they leave. It's something that's embedded into the ethos of the National Trust, something I wholeheartedly agree with. I'm going to tell you a tale, something that is true, something that happened when I was training to be a local preacher in Cheshire some 20 years ago. I was taking an evening service in a church, a small church, and my mum and our next-door neighbour and a friend decided they wanted to come with us. So I filled the car And off we went to this church and we arrived early because I was taking the service. My mum and my neighbour and their friend sat in one of the pews. All of them were empty. They were the first to arrive apart from the steward. I went into the vestry to make preparations for the service. And when I came out a few minutes later, I discovered that my mum and our neighbour and their friend, had moved to another pew. After the service, I asked, while we were in the car driving back, why they had moved. And they told me that somebody had come into church and told them they couldn't sit there, that was somebody else's seat, and told them they had to move. So obediently, they did. I fed this back to the steward and expressed my concern at what seemed to be a lack of welcome on the part of this church, or at least one individual within it. It was quite some time before I was at that church again. But my mum and our neighbour and a friend decided they wanted to come again. And so... We got to the church and they didn't sit in the pew that they had originally sat in the time before. They sat in a different pew again. There was nobody there. And I witnessed for myself what happened before the service began. Somebody came into the pew behind my mum and her friends and tapped my mum on the shoulder. And my mum turned round to look at this person and they asked my mum to stand up and her friends as well. They looked a bit surprised but they did as they were asked and they stood up. Almost immediately this person took the cushions 
from the pew and took them away, saying, you can sit there, but you can't sit on these cushions, they're somebody else's. Silently, my mum, our neighbour and their friend sat back down. But as I looked at their faces, I knew they really wanted to leave. They didn't want to stay for a service where they didn't feel welcomed, where they didn't feel wanted, where they felt that they were a hindrance and in the way. Those two experiences have stayed with me. And one of the things that I try to do in ministry is to encourage churches to have a real ministry of welcome. I recall a very wise Anglican colleague of mine in Longwell Green in Bristol, Reverend David Adams, saying in a meeting once, no church has the right to call itself friendly or welcoming. It is an honour that is only bestowed upon it by those who visit and feel that that is true. There's much truth in those words. So I want you to think about Jesus on the cross. In pain. In agony. Wanting it all to be over. And yet, he engages in conversation with two criminals who are either side of him. And to the one who asks the question of whether Jesus will remember him when he comes into his kingdom, he responds, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I wonder what paradise looks like here on earth. I wonder how we have felt when we have been truly welcomed, truly made to feel at home, in somebody else's home, in a church, in a new place, a new context. We can't help but think at the moment of those millions displaced from Ukraine, not knowing where home will be for some time to come, and yet desperate for the welcome of a neighbouring country or of those countries who are taking in refugees around Europe and beyond. What does welcome look like? What does it feel like? I've heard different comments from door stewards who actually I think are the most important people in the life of the church and its ministry. And I've heard good and bad. And perhaps one or two of the worst examples I'll just share with you now. Where have you been? We haven't seen you for months. Oh, you've come back at last. That's a real surprise. You may have heard similar comments yourself. But when we do things differently, when we see somebody we haven't seen for a long time, and metaphorically speaking, we hold out our arms in welcome, that sense of belonging, of being rooted in a place, can't ever be underestimated. How wonderful to see you. You've cheered my day. Come on in. Would you like to sit with somebody that you don't know? Would you like to be introduced to somebody? The opportunities are endless in the church, but also perhaps in our communities too. Opportunities to 
smile and wave at our neighbours. Opportunities to give a helping hand. Opportunities to offer support to struggling families or individuals. We can't ever be as welcoming as Jesus, much that we might try. But we can try to do our best to greet people genuinely, to appreciate their presence with us, and to genuinely say farewell until we meet again. So I'm going to conclude with a hymn from Singing the Faith. And it's Singing the Faith number 409. A hymn written by Marty Haugen. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true where all God's children dare to seek, to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the feast that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach and live the word they've known. Here the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed, as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Generous, loving, welcoming God, as we hold in our mind's eye that image of Jesus on the cross, offering welcome to a criminal at his side. May you help us by the power of your spirit to be people of welcome. Every day, in the church and outside of the church, May we never pull a cushion out from underneath somebody else. May we never shove somebody into a different pew. May we have a genuine, warm welcome to others. Because you call us to, 
and because they are our sisters and brothers. May we follow the example of Jesus and enable others to know that they are always welcome in your house. Amen.